okay, that was the first time that happened. I talked to y'all for a bit and I was on mute. So now let's try audio visual check. Good morning. It is September 22nd, 2021, Wednesday, Fed day, Fed day. It is 8.22 a.m. Eastern, 6.22 Mountain. I feel like I've said all these things 20 times, sorry. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, Ronnie, Dan, MG, Judd, Amara, Asia, Tamazon, Barry, David, Patrick, Night Truck, Jason, Cassia, Ian, Roger. Good morning. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. Thank you. I told y'all good morning a couple times now. Sorry. My bad. Having a blonde morning, obviously. Thank you, Kane. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. It is Fed Day. It's going to be an interesting day. I added to my slide deck from yesterday. I have a little more education for us. <laughs> Good morning to you. So the format is I go over the Fab Four futures, crypto, commodities, movers and shakers of the day. We will get started in seven minutes. In the meantime, I'm just going to chat with my friends. Let's see, AMD, let's take a look. AMD, look how it's trapped under that daily 50 MA. It's got to get over the daily 50 MA. You have a gap, wait, did you fill the gap? 103.43, nope. You have a gap fill over here at 103.71 to be aware of. So once the bulls are able to achieve that gap, let's then we see what happens. Was it just a magnet? They go up, they close the gap, and then come back down. This is heavily dependent on the four hour equilibrium with NASDAQ. So you're going to hear me say four hour equilibrium a lot today. We may have some slow action into FOMC. That is typically the pattern. Doesn't mean it'll be the pattern today, but you just see people backing up from the bid and ask and just saying, we're just going to sit on our hands and sit on our wallets until this FOMC thing is done. And typically you'll see let's say a big spike up and whatever that initial move is, is typically uh, short lived and it reverses and it can reverse the other way as well. And then we get an EQ. So that's typically what happens. If they really love whatever comes out, then you'll just see it go and run and it won't come back. But that does not, I've seen that happen twice. I think it was in um, 2000, 18 March of 2018 I believe it was just an unbelievable day they love what uh, FOMC who was it then yell, yelling I don't know whatever they had to say and it just kept running but typically you get a pretty quick reverse so let me go look at the four hour for you four hour we're getting trapped under these EMAs on AMD and we got a rising wedge you see that if somebody wants to post this in the room, in the chart guys room, I'd appreciate it. This potential hourly rising wedge. So a rising wedge just means tiny higher highs with very little follow through. So I don't trust this as much because uh, the, the last little tiny higher high happened in after hours action, but this is a pretty believable one. So caution on AMD. Yeah, let's improve. Let's do it. Hey, Jorge, good morning. Hey, Topher. Hey, EB. Let's look at some Nat gas. I saw an oversold balance I mentioned yesterday in live. So we are looking for a weekly higher low, and we got oversold on the four hour. We were approaching oversold here, and I mentioned a potential bottom fish. This still could be a bear flag. So we had bear flag and roll over. Bear flag, roll over. And this is another potential bear flag. So caution, we are sitting on the daily EMA and we have a daily inside bar on that gas. 15 minute just changed the, the, uh, the uptrend, but I don't like that for a clear pivot, but I guess I'll use it. So your ne next support is 4805, 4789. Resistance 4878. So, Hey, Max, welcome. You found yourself a bunch amongst friends. Uber, I don't know. My uh, Magic 8 Ball is in the shop, but we'll look at it. Let's look at Uber. Uber worked out yesterday, our queen of the mountain trade. But man, it was ugly at the beginning. 
over here. I didn't realize that Uber was so wiki wiki. Here, it faked us out. It was just really tough. Here's my alert on BNTX. So, and then it had great follow through. So it had a fundamental catalyst yesterday with a increase in guidance. We got above the daily 50 MA. We will have a pullback. Don't know when, but we will. And we could look for a potential bull flag with the size of this pull. The odds favor, I may have to take turn off my thinker swim if it keeps dinging I don't want to and I will actually turn it off I don't want to annoy y'all so yes I like uber for potential continuation but let's we know what happens when we run like this we can go sideways for a day or two and so today with FOMC it's not the ideal day to get that continuation hey wave trader thoughts on clove Clove is a toughie. Bears love to hate it. 741 is the level they must hold. Could be a little one hour falling wedge here, but that's really giving the benefit of the doubt to the clove bulls when they don't they really, really don't love to hold gains. So 772, we've got a double bottom here. Needs to hold 788 key resistant GTBIF. We'll get started officially in two minutes. I'm just answering a few chart requests. Okay, so GTBIF, uh, this is USMJ, right? I'm 99% sure. So 2780 is the level to break to get that daily trend change. Gotta get the trend changes and we gotta see that vote go all the way through, not just like we think it's gonna pass. Everything has to all clear, like you're, you know, you're hitting somebody with paddles. We gotta get the all clear on that. It's terrible, ain't it, Ronnie? My magic eight ball and my crystal ball have been in the shop for years. It's crazy. We are dealing with probabilities and accepting the fact that we are dealing with probabilities is part of the journey. Actually, I have a slide on that. Accepting the probabilities and we literally have no idea what's going to happen on the black side of the screen, the right side. The I like to call it the Taylor Swift blank space over here. We have no idea. It's a big question mark, but we use data clues over here to give us an edge for the black side of the screen. So it, we get a, we have a bit more of an edge than you do at the craps table or poker or whatever, because we're gathering data from the left side of the screen and we know historically how crowds move. And this is what the chart charts is crowd psychology. Okay. Yeah, I have FDX. I have it on here. We'll talk about it. BBIG. And then we'll get her going. We are looking for a weekly high or low. So that's comment number one. We have come back all the way to the 0.618 retrace. That is not good. So no bull flag for you. And we're, we may not even, well, odds favor a higher low. Four hour not oversold. I would like this to the long side for a counter trend flip on a four hour oversold situation on BBIG. Hourly resistance 747.65, support 593. Not looking constructive. Oh, you're welcome, Bitcoin. It's my pleasure. Hit the like button, hit that subscribe button. And no love for commodities? Oh, I love you. I love commodities. It's just hard for me to keep up with chat. I lose my spot. I need a Hayden in here to give me check marks. Okay. 54.18. Key level here. Line in sand. What did we hit here? Oh, 53.52. We already broke it. Next line in sand. 52.33. This is a mess. Daily oversold First step in any chart that's beat down is an hourly trend change. And right now, Amera Asia has to get over yesterday's high. All right, it's 6.31 a.m. I'm Chart Gal Lori, and I am part of the Chart Guys community. We teach technical analysis. I do this pregame show Monday through Friday, and I go over the, the indices, crypto, commodities, movers and shakers of the day. You'll hear me sometimes throw, throw around the word queen of the mountain where I give you high conviction setups. But basically, if it's on my screen over here, it's a setup that I'm eyeing and I have alerts. You saw that alert just come up on BNTX. I'm always prepping my charts that I'm most interested in. 
And over here, this is my trading setup. So this is what I'm ready to look at for the day here. I always look at the indices, but Apple, always look at Apple, Amazon, Dash, EXAS, and SoFi. I have Amazon up here because I missed a pretty obvious five minute lower high because I didn't have the chart pulled up and I don't want to miss those because those can be big winners. So if you're interested in my chart setup, it's on the screen right now. You can do a screenshot. I'm going to go ahead and clear it out. And the story of the day is it's Fed Day. My husband, he always calls this my Super Bowl day. This is my Super Bowl. So these days can be big winners or they can be big losers or you can enjoy watching the price action and smile and wave and do nothing. And if you're not a consistently profitable trader, that's you probably need to go with the latter as your strategy for the day. Meaning sit on your hands, get some oven mitts, put on your hands, shut your broker down. That's a good tip is just shut your broker down. If it's not open, you're not gonna be tempted to make trades turn off your phone with turn your broker off on the phone do whatever you got to do but don't get caught up in this mishigas today because you could get chopped up volatility should pick up around 2 p.m eastern please verify that time but typically it's at 11 a.m pacific 2 p.m eastern where they go over are they going to be dovish or hawkish meaning are they going to possibly raise interest rates sooner than what the market's pricing in and 99% of what is going could come out of their mouth is probably baked into the market already. So just know that it's already baked in. So if we have some crazy reactions, I mean, it would have to be a big surprise for us to really take a turn for the worse or go higher faster, because typically what they've said, they've leaked all along. Bullard, all these presidents, they're all the Fed uh, presidents or whatever you call it, not cheer whatever they are they release stuff it seems like every friday they're constantly talking so they're giving us a heads up they may taper sooner they're going to push off tapering they may raise interest rates sooner they may stop buying the bonds back turn the printer off whatever so we're just going to trade price action because none of us that i know of in this room are uh, economist or macro economist so we're just going to leave that to the big dogs and we're just going to trade technical analysis all right so right now we have a four hour equilibrium and that is the story of the day four hour equilibrium we're watching apple i'm watching apple with all four of my eyes because apple is so key to this market it is equal to the russell the market cap is equal to all the companies that reside within the russell which is 2000 companies so i'm keeping my eyes on apple that's the story of the day so let's mark this up here's your key levels and I may switch to the CFD. I, I don't like them. I'm just going to stay with the future. So 439575, that's your four hour lower high. 432125 is your four hour high or low. And now we've given ourselves enough room for a higher low on a pullback. So I envision a scenario like this where we pull back and set a lower high before FOMC, pull back, let's get a candle close below, and then we could possibly, let's see, do we have enough time to do all that? Yeah, we're odds favored that we'll get a bull or bear break of this at FOMC reaction. So that's your key levels. Screenshot this, take a mental image of it. So yesterday, if you were shorting that hourly 50 MA that I was pounding the table on, I jokingly called it the Great Wall of Evergrande, we got a ton of short opportunities off that hourly 50 MA and it took one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine tests of that hourly 50 MA to get over it, nine. That shows you how powerful these algos are geared to short it. A bull pops his head over the 50. So think of this 50 MA as a fence. A bull pops his head over and they just bonk it on the head and push it back over the fence. And that's what happened all day and all night until the bulls managed to get over it. So I would say that's quite an accomplishment, but we still could have a daily bear flag on ES. So the reaction, how we react, and we could come up to this um, 8 EMA 4405 area and it still be a bear flag. So I'm not gonna get overly bullish in any scenario. It would have to be some face ripping stuff with bull volume for me to 
go bullish here because everything is set up very nicely for the bears. So we always have to remind ourselves when we have a trend, whatever the trend is, bearish, bullish, whatever, when we have a trend and in this situation down and we go sideways, that is still a win for whomever's in control before. So the whoever was the preceding controller, in this case bears, when we go sideways, that is a tick in favor of the bears because the bulls aren't even able to pull it out of this inside bar. Well, actually, bad example, but out of this range, I should say, this bearish range. So it is a tick in favor. Same thing goes for uptrends. So if you have an uptrend and you go sideways, that is a tick in favor of bulls because they controlled the trend and that means the bears aren't getting traction. Bulls are not getting traction in this area. So four hour equilibrium with extreme caution and a bearish lean, NASDAQ. NASDAQ has a cute little 15 minute EQ. Do we break bull? Yep, we need to get over this 15088. We have an EQ here, broke it by 50 cents, but that's not really a bear break. So we're, we're breaking bull out of this, but you can just see the hesitancy, like the hesitation. Like, oh, we got a bull break, but not really. We're still kind of parked there. And it's all because of this four hour equilibrium and the FOMC over hanging our heads. Resistance 15163, support 15070. So of our four, RTY has bounced the hardest, but I would say they're pretty neck and neck, all four of them, despite the disparities in these tiny little percentages. Overall, I would say that uh, we're just neck and neck. Apple, again, Apple, Apple, Apple will be the story of the day. So RTY, sorry, resistance 2208, support 2163. YM, same thing, four hour EQ. You get the picture, 34236 and 33638. So there should be no question as to where we are in price. And this isn't Lori's opinion is the bearish lean. That's my opinion. But the facts are we are in an equilibrium sideways pattern and typically that favors to whomever had control before. So I would love to see an Adam and Eve pattern. The pointy part's the male part, that's Adam, and the round part's the Eve part, but this isn't round enough for me to quite call it an Adam and Eve, which is a bullish reversal pattern because we still got four hour EMAs overhead. We still got lots of construction to do on this chart for bulls. All right, Bitcoin, let's talk about it. So Bitcoin and ES are the markets in general have been very correlated, but you see how Bitcoin set that lower low? So it's a bearish correlation because ES, NASDAQ, RTY, YM, they held this low when they came back to back test it. Bitcoin did not, and it was on elevated bear volume. Definite bearish co correlation to the market. Clearest level I can give you, four hour inside bars. Resistance, 42631, support 41850. Let me map that so you can screenshot it in case you want it. Now, let's use what we just talked about to apply to this chart. Who was in charge before we started going sideways? Who was in charge? Bears. Sideways favors the bears. Look at this volume. Now, we know that the bulls don't have to bring volume in the market typically, but this is some pretty notable bear volume on Bitcoin. So just caution, doesn't mean we can't pull ourselves out of this. It was kind of given a head and shoulders look, but that's too sloppy. So just go with, stay with the cleanest look price action wise, which is four hour inside bars. Ethereum, we broke the low of this, but not enough to, that's negligible at this point. So same thing, bearish correlation to the market. 2282 is your key support and 2958 are your key resistances. All right, so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about some comments I made yesterday on live. I think I did it here too. I have been uh, gravitating more toward futures in this environment with volatility spiking. I don't, I'm tired of fighting the Greeks. I fight the Greeks when I play options. I'm fighting Delta, Beta, Thega, Gamma. I don't wanna fight all these soldiers these this greek army and i was looking up image like this is what i feel like i'm fighting when i go to trade an option i have to get the direction right i have to get a greater than expected move it has to get there quickly and i have to deal with this greek 
army right here. There's Delta, there's Vega, there's Gamma, there's Theta. Ain't nobody got time for that. So that this these premiums are through the roof with volatility high. So I have switched to futures. If I wanna trade the indices, I am trading futures. So that has been a personal thing that I've made and it's been working well this week. I just wanna get clean price action and I don't wanna fight all these Greeks. Okay, so, and I'm not, that is not derogatory toward Greeks. You know what I mean, Greeks as in the option Greeks. So yesterday we went over day trade setups and tools. We went over potential trade setups, tools to keep you in the trade, and tools to keep you out of a losing trade. So let's talk about these trade setups. I gave you a few. You could add a thousand more to this, this list. Okay, well today's topic is once you've defined your edge, and let's say that your edge is equilibriums. That's your edge. And you say, that's what I'm gonna focus on, Lori. That's my system. I'm telling you, pick a system. It is key. If you try to master all of these at once, I can guarantee you will fail. Justin Wilson, you will fail. You gotta pick one, pick one. Then we're gonna do the uh, Mark Douglas exercise. So based on trading in the zone and Mark Douglas's How to Think Like a Professional Trader via YouTube, awesome series by the way, he talks to you about defining your edge, accepting probabilities, and then whatever that edge is, do that edge for the next 20 trades and work on some areas of your trading. And here's areas of your trading you can work on while trading that one defined edge. So what's your edge? It doesn't have to be these. Again, it could be when it's Tuesday at 9.59 a.m. If SPY RSI is at 27, I will go long. Of course, that's a stupid setup, but I'm saying it can be that obscure that makes no sense to me, but you have found a system then try it for 20 times straight. Don't take any, I gotta learn how to spell at three o'clock in the morning. Don't take any other trades, just that one trade setup, and then document it. 20 times when that edge presents itself, you take it, period, end of discussion. You don't hesitate, you, you take the trade without hesitation. That's one of Mark Douglas's comments. So you start thinking in probabilities, discipline and not giving in to FOMO, holding win winners longer. I'm telling you, try this exercise. So yesterday we talked about systems and edges and today I'm encouraging you to pick one and stick with it for 20 trades in a row. Your desired outcomes of completing the sample set. <laughs> MJ Trader, you like that, huh? Okay. so. Getting away from thinking trade to trade. This is what we're trying to do with this exercise. Taming FOMO, confirm that your pro profit taking plan is profitable over a series of trades. Do it, do it. Okay, that's it for mama in this morning. All right, gold, what you doing gold? I haven't looked at you today. Gold is running into the underside of a downtrending four hour 50 MA and the 200 MA on the hourly. We have lost the hourly uptrend. So Dan is looking for this. It's something I haven't been calling out. Potential inverse head and shoulders. It is one ugly inverse head and shoulders. But let's see what the bulls do with this bull, this bear break of the hourly. Can they salvage that hourly 50 MA and head higher? Next support, 1758. Do y'all know how much air I gulp when I'm talking to y'all? It's so hard. I'm just, I guess I'm just full of so much hot air. Okay, so we got we had these hourly inside bars. I played this trade this morning. I, I took this bear break on this hourly inside bar, but it's getting a little lower wick of bulls buying this dip here. We have oil inventory this morning at 1030. So oil could get a double whammy if the FOMC impacts the dollar, which it always does to the upside or downside, it could impact oil. Plus you have inventory. So good luck with that. Potential 15 minute bear flag here on oil. Resistance, 7162, 7170, support, 7125 and 7120. Apple, if you watch Dan's market video last night, he talked about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have 10 closes on Apple. The stair step trade setup is here. If we can break through the high of yesterday, 144.60, and then the high of 
Monday, 144.84, we're looking north. We're looking north and we'll be protective against bear flags. But if if you want to know how interested I am in this trade, look at these alerts that I have set. I have them set inside, inside the inside bar right here. I want to give myself time to set up my trade. So I will go fight the Greek army on this one. I will trade options on it because I like this trade set up so much. Hourly 50 MA, got to get over the Great Wall of Evergrande right here. You got it? This is it. This is the queen of the mountain. I'll remember to say it. Queen of the mountain. And I'm only, only looking to play this bullish. If it continues to go down, I will smile and wave. And I will wait for this stair step trade to work out. Because if it's going down, then we just have an 11th day of down action, of lower highs every day. Got it? Only looking up. If it doesn't set up, smile and wave. BNTX, daily inside bar. And so I thought it would follow MRNA. I like this chart. I like this squeeze. I like that we're holding the 50 RSI. I like that. Now I'm going to go back and add it over here. I had it over here on my charts for the day and I took it off. But I just love this setup. This is a bullish setup daily inside bar. I am only looking to play this long. As we sit here on the daily 50 MA, this could be a great buying opportunity for a potential swing. I'm only looking long on this tightening pattern. Queen of the mountain. Bros, inside bar potential today. The only reason I'm bringing up my little choo-choo train is because I've been talking about it for so many days in a row. I've been bringing it up in the room, but this is one large range. If you got it yesterday, congratulations. It was one of our better queen of the mountain trades in a while, 31%. Lord have mercy. So we're opening up in the middle of this, but I would not put it past the bulls to go for a bull break, but that is not what the odds favor. If I'm trading probabilities, which is what I have to do, if we have a 30% range in the day, odds favor, we stay within that. So careful with day trading bros today. It could just stay sideways. Amira, Asia, you are a metal junkie. My goodness. I'll try to help you at the end, but remember I have very limited time. I will try. Okay, dash. Dash with a daily inside bar, potential daily bull flag. I like this setup to the long side, meaning I bottom fish supports. So I look to try to play this 220 for a long entry. I like dash to the long side. EXAS, queen of the mountain. Look at this double daily inside bar. Does it get any better? And we're sitting on the 50. Chick, chick. We've got a squeeze. We're holding the 50 RSI. Look into the long side. But the market will affect all of these Queen of the Mountain setups if we break out of this equilibrium sooner than FOMC or even after FOMC. It will have a, could bring a heaviness to the stock. FDX, I have, you can see I have an alert set here for this 23479. 23479. We're going to be opening straight on it. If we could hold, let's say, all the way down to 2, 3, 4, 50, I would say that could be a long counter trend opportunity on this FDX bearish earnings reaction. It's getting hammered. High, high risk. Lulu. We love Lulu last week, and I love Lulu now. So, got a little megaphone I just noticed here. But I like Lulu to the long side. This consolidation sideways has been overall constructive we've got a four hour squeeze rsi is above 50. i like lulu to the long side a dip by around 420. ha 420 mj day i like it for a dip by mrna it played out perfectly yesterday i covered it live it was a great trade setup and i'm looking for potential continuation today but if you're looking for a continuation bullish trade that has a lower probability than a BNTX who is fresh and still inside. So you see BNTX is still inside. MRNA has already had its bull break, but we could get continuation today. But I like BNTX just a little better, if that makes sense. Piton. Piton, I like this trade. I have my alert set. So even if I don't have it up here, if I'm real interested in it, I just set my alerts. This is nice and tight. And look at the stair step trade. Piton stair step, daily inside bar. I like it 
only to the long side because if it keeps going down, if it makes another candle down, okay, I can watch it tomorrow. Another one, okay, I can watch it tomorrow. The stair step waits till it breaks bull. Ronnie, ain't that true? Amera Asia is a member. Okay, stitch fix, post earnings trade, opening drive scalp, used at high of low bar on two minutes or back burner later in day on the five minute. So big bullish reaction to earnings. Y'all know what to do. High of low bar. Put your stop under that low and then stop out if it breaks below that low. You stop out. So I like this to the long side, queen of the mountain. SOFI. I had been posting dark pulls on this and then I saw John posted this weekly trend change potentially on deck and we have a weekly inside bar over 1613 would be a bull break and we got a, a price target upgrade today for $25. I like this to the long side. Tesla. Tesla. Daily RSI of 50 is key to hold in my opinion. And then we could possibly look upward for a gap fill up at... Oh, wait. One second. Did we get that? No. Sorry. Gap fill at 750. 750 is gap fill on Tesla. I like it to the long side. Not a queen of the mountain for me, though. I don't have that much clarity, but I like it. Yeti daily inside bar. Tweezer bottom. And we got to squeeze, folks. Oh, the other one I covered live and I have a position in, AMAT. That's a beautiful tweezer bottom. Y'all see that? Beautiful. Got to squeeze. Yeti looks very similar. We got to get above that 50 MA. Spy. I feel like some of y'all are like junkies. You know how, man, you got to give me a hit. You got to give me a hit. Y'all want me to go over your chart. Come on, man. You got to give me something. Funny. I'm not making fun of y'all because I'm the same way. If I want Dan's opinion on the chart or Jason's, I'm the same way. Give me a hit. Okay, there's your levels for SPY. We're opening up within that range. No shocker there. Four-hour equilibrium. QQQ. Let's get you junkies some levels. There you go. Okay. I will go over platinum. Or I will try. My computer, I still haven't done my update. Uh-oh. My computer just went out because I need to do my update. Some of y'all have been messaging me. I'm sorry. I know, I know, I know. Platinum, nice bounce. Four-hour RSI is overbought going into this downtrending 200 MA. Right here. Careful. Careful here. 981.50. Careful. You are in a stair-step trade. You could, Well, no, not really. That's not stair-step because we broke the low right there, but... We are overbought and you're running into resistance here. It, it's on there, Callum. You can rewind for uh, SOFI. It's, a, it's on there. Rewind a bit. Roblox daily inside bar is the story. Support 77 and 11. Resistance 79, 17. One more and then I'm done. Sava. Got some news, but man, that is one ugly upper wick. I would not invite this one to the prom. Inside bar forming right now, but your high of the reaction, 68.65. Come on. You're entering into an area with very little uh, resistance on Sava. So it's only psychological levels up to 123.37. All right, that's it for me. TCGers, I'll see you in the room. Pre-gamers, I'll see you tomorrow. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter, Charkal Lori. All right, y'all have a great day.